My dear brothers and respected sisters, I greet you all with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Allah. We bear witness and we testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness and we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his slave. All salawats and salams be upon our Prophet, upon his noble family, his righteous companions, and all those who follow his path till the last day. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we are going towards the end of the year, we see many people are excited because there is holiday, kids, you know, this is the last day of their school. But sometimes, it is very, very important for us as Muslims. Every time when it comes the end of the year, it is important for us to think and reflect for the year that we are leaving behind. That every single moment, every single day or month or year that we leave behind, we are getting closer to meet our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this happened to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Jibreel came to our Prophet and said to him, alayhi salatu salam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, love whoever you want. One day you are going to be separated from them. And do whatever you want. One day you are going to be accountable for everything that you have done in this dunya. If this address was to our Prophet والسلام, to the best creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how about us, my dear brothers and sisters? Do we ever think, as the saying goes, Hasib nafsaka kabla an tuhasib? So, Hasib nafsaka, bring yourself to account. Reflect on yourself before others put you into account when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every time when it comes to the end of the year, it's important to think, my dear brothers and sisters, for this entire year that we are leaving behind, every single day, and just take it yesterday, that day that we left yesterday, it will never come back again until we meet our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever we have done on that day, it's, it was written and it's written and it will be there. So when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our registers and our books will be open in front of Allah. And this is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Think, number one, just as a family. And number two, as a person. Because when we die, every single one of us will be buried separately and alone. So no family will be able to help you. No wealth, no friends, no one. We will be buried alone. And the only thing that will be able to help you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, is our deeds. So one of the things, and in this few weeks that we have left in this year, inshallah, we'll talk about this particular topic. How we are able to, to fix the past and move on with our future. One of the key things that I will talk about, inshallah, in the next few khutbas is our relationship with our Lord. Things that we should have done, it, but we, we didn't do it. Or salah, or prayer, or zakah, you know, charity, compulsory charity, or psalm, fasting. How was our fasting last year? All these things that we should have done to think, have we missed any of those things? If we have, to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, our relationship with other people. If you've hurt someone, if you said bad things about someone, if you gossiped about someone, don't let this year go without you go and ask for forgiveness. Don't let your ego and pride get on the way, thinking that I am a better person. The only being that doesn't want you to repent to Allah and ask other people for forgiveness is shaitan, is Iblis. Iblis wants us to die without repenting 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without asking each other for forgiveness. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is very, very important. As I said, on a personal level and also as a family as well, to rebuild our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all those things that we have missed to, to try and do them better in this coming year. And those things that we have done wrong towards Allah to ask Allah for forgiveness. And those people that we have done wrong towards one another, always to ask each other for forgiveness. And let me tell you, the person who starts first in Islam is always a bigger person. Don't, as I said, don't say, no, no, who is he for me to go and ask for forgiveness? No, who is he? You know, I'm, I've got this degree, I've got this status, I've got this family, I've got this wealth. Allah doesn't care about those things. Allah cares what is in your heart. One of the things that I decided to talk today very briefly is our bad habits. As I said, these are the series of talks, lectures or khutbas that we will talk about this particular topic. One of the topics that we can think of before this year is ended are bad habits. And every single one of us, without exception, has some sort of bad habits. If you ask me, I can tell you mine. If I ask, every single one of us has those bad habits. But what is even worse, that we are not able to get rid of them. You know, we just happen to do them, even though all of us acknowledge that those habits that we have are bad habits. You understand? And this is very, very important. So I just decided to mention a few tips that can help every single one of us how to get rid of these bad habits before this new year. So inshallah, we start the new year fresh, trying to eliminate, getting, you know, rid, get rid of, of those bad habits and replace them, inshallah, with good habits. Number one, a lot of people who tell you get rid of that bad habit without doing anything or, you know, I think majority of those people fail. The tip that I can give you is always try to change the bad habit with something else, with a good habit. Because it is very important how our brain works. Every time when you used to go for a smoke, every time when you used to go do something, if you don't replace that with something else good, your mind will always go there again. And it's a big possibility for you to do that bad habit again. You understand? So always change and not erase the habit. Try to erase, it's very hard. People that can do that, good luck to them. But I'm talking about majority of people here. Majority of us that are weak. We're not able just to erase that bad habit without replacing that with something which is, which is good. Let, let me give you an example. All of us, including myself, I struggle when it comes to food. You know, I love my cheese, you know, being... Uh, an, an halal expert. I've tasted so many cheese in, in my life when I go to, to companies. Now, sometimes eating cheese or eating you know, junk food at home, chips and all that stuff because you're watching a, whatever documentary or something, it's part of our life nowadays, true or not. Now, trying to get rid of those chips and cheeses and all that, if you don't replace, every time you sit down to watch TV, your mind goes where? to take something to eat, to put in your mouth. Is that true or not? So to remove the chips without replacing those junk food with something which is healthy, replace it with fruits or vegetables or something that is healthy for your body. So trying to remove it completely, I don't think it's a good idea because after a few days, you're going to go and buy them again. But always replace, even if that, even if it takes for you to, to keep those apples in your car, you know some people eat in the car and, and there's snacks there and there is junk food there and McDonald's, subhanAllah nowadays, all this junk food, KFC, McDonald's, they're making millions and billions of dollars. Why? Because it has become a habit. Every time we pass by McDonald's or KFC or Nando's or all those places, and it's not just us, even our kids, 
as young as one year old, they're able to recognize McDonald's sign. And they push you, Baba, McDonald's, McDonald's. You've got no choice but to go to McDonald's. You understand? So getting rid of all that, I don't think it's going to be easy or even possible. Replace it with something that is healthier. Because in Islam, health, it is very, very important. Number two, my dear brothers and sisters, number one is replace them. Number two, recognize the triggers. What triggers you to do that bad habit? You understand? Sometimes it might be friends. Sometimes it might be uh, TV. It might be social media. Whatever that bad habit is, you have to identify what triggers that bad habit so you can stay away from those triggers. As I said, if you sit down and watch TV, and the only thing that you eat when you watch TV is chips or something which is junk food, you better stay away from TV for a while. Okay? If something that triggers you to become angry by watching news, you know where I come from. Mashallah, every time we watch news. You know, sometimes when I was young, my dad, even though no one was talking, it came to the point, hey, quiet, but no one is talking. So he's that focused on watching news and politics and all that. It, it becomes too much. Sometimes it changes your mood. And nowadays, a lot of our youth, by getting involved in social media and politics and what is happening with COVID and all that, they're getting angrier and upset, even though they're not able to change anything in the world. The only people that they're harming is themselves and those people that live with them. If that triggers you to be upset or angry, stay away from news, stay away from social media. You understand? That is very, very important. One of the things I want to tell you, this is not a bad habit, this is haram, but mentioning it is worth, worth it, you know. And remember, Islam never allows us to judge anyone. Whether I am an imam or you are a normal person, doesn't mean that I am better than you. In Islam, this is the beauty of Islam. So one of the things that counselors mention especially those people that have this bad habit, drinking, alcohol. It's bad habit and haram at the same time. You know, these counselors say, psychologists, if you keep alcohol in the house, even though you said you quit it, what's going to happen? You're still going to go to that alcohol again. True or not? So sometimes getting, you know, stopping a bad habit or a haram you have to stay away and get rid of that haram from your house at least. And if your friends encourage you to do something wrong or bad or bad habits, stay away from those friends. You understand? This is very, very important. Especially with things that are bad habits and are very dangerous in Islam as major sins. You understand? You know, the hadith of the Prophet, Ali Salatu Salam, the person who killed 99 people, you remember? Prophet well, what did he say uh, in, in, in that hadith, that scholar to that guy? He said, in order for you, what? In order for you to change, one, to repent to Allah, number one, but number two, go to another city. Go to another place. Because if you stay here with those friends, with this place, it will remind you to do the same sin again. If you want to stay away from those bad habits, and we still stay with those friends that drink or smoke or do whatever they do, doesn't matter how strong we are, it's a very high possibility for us to go back to that bad habit again. You understand? This is very, very important. Especially, I say here bad habits, but you get my point. There are some bad habits that are light and some bad habits that are considered in Islam to be haram. Start with those that are heavier. You understand? Those bad habits that Allah talked about it, or even our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Start with those first. And also, <clears throat> as I said, it's very important to replace them with something good. And that is um, not just for ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters, especially when it comes to our children. You know, sometimes we see our children doing something wrong. 
We try to stop them, advise them, but just by stopping them and removing that iPad from their hands or removing that from whatever they were doing, if you don't replace that with something else, it's going to be very hard for them to accept it. You understand? If their habit is to, do, to go out and at night or do something, you have to be smart to replace that with something else that will be beneficial for them. Doesn't matter what it takes. You understand? Even if they have to go to gym instead of going out and you know, doing haram, or even if they have to play some sports, you have to be there to encourage them. Because when it comes to sports, when it comes to gym, when it comes to these things, you know, they have a routine there. They have a structure there. And that is very, very important. I, myself, as a father, I would encourage myself and all of you to encourage our kids to, to play some sort of sport or to have some sort of hobby. Number one is healthy. And number two, it keeps them occupied Instead of going somewhere else with friends doing something haram, at least they're doing something that is beneficial for them. And we know that they're safe what they're doing. And this is very, very important. By just stopping them, trying to stop them to do something without giving them something else, most of the parents fail. You understand? Most of the parents fail. So this is not just for ourselves, but also for our children, my dear brothers and sisters. And also... You know, I have tried this, and you know, I'm very honest with all of you, and, and as blunt as I can, going to gym or doing something, you have to be persistent. Majority of people that go to gym, how long they last? They last one week, two weeks, the third week, they give up. You understand? And by giving up, that means that it's a high possibility for you to go to that bad, bad habit that you were doing, and you replace with going to gym. Some say, if you're successful to go to gym for three months, that means that you're successful. Because majority of people fail in those three months. They start, they pay membership, they do that. One week, two weeks, oh, I can't be bothered anymore. You understand? So we have to be persistent, knowing that what we are doing is something to, 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 to get us better people. Especially when it comes to Islam. This is very, very important. Everything that we are talking about here is for us to rebuild and to have a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, to make us better Muslims towards one another. And especially towards our family members and towards the community, Muslim community, and towards even other people. You understand? And this is very important. What worries me a lot is the time that we are wasting, especially our children. A lot of these apps, a lot of these games, you know, like even if you're an adult playing those games, you get addicted. They're so real when you're in front of TV and, you know, some of those games are even... Uh, Violent games, you know, by killing people and doing this. And, you know, they're, they're gaining billions of dollars because our kids are playing those games. And I must admit, I am among those people. I've got two children. And sometimes I say, Baba, buy this app for me. So my card is linked to their account or whatever. Sometimes even I cannot stop this. That's how, how dangerous it is. You understand? So I'm not saying now, you know, I have to get rid of it or it doesn't happen to me. No, it happens to every single one of us. We have to be honest here. But we have to try our best. And what is the most important part is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. Doesn't matter how hard we try, without Allah's help and without sincere effort, it will never happen. So we try our best and then the rest, we leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, Allah will make it easy for us and for our children. As I said, it's very, very important for ourselves. The, the, the only way our children to change is if we change ourselves first and then our children. 
There is no point telling our kids don't drink or don't do this if we do those things ourselves. You understand? So we have to be role models for our children. Everything that you're about to do, remember what kind of message you're sending to your children by doing those things. So today, inshallah, all of us, with Allah's help, identify some of the bad habits that we have and that we have done in this year that we are leaving behind. Identify them, put it in a piece of paper, because no one knows yourself more than you. Put them down. Number two is, what triggers those bad habits? Find those, identify those triggers, and how we can replace those bad habits with something which is good and beneficial for us. If you're able to take these three sentences from me today, inshallah, this will be enough. Identify them. No one is able to tell me that I don't have bad habits. We all do. Whether it's sleeping, whether it's eating, whether it's whatever it is, you understand? Identify them, find the triggers, replace them with something good, and inshallah, start this year with less of those bad, bad habits. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for every single one of us to get rid of those bad habits, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this year that we're leaving behind to forgive all our sins that we have done, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And to make us of those that will be able to be better Muslims in this new year, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, make us of those that you're pleased with us in this world and the next, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us of those that we are able to feed ourselves and our families with halal and to stay away from haram, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us of those that we love, we advise one another only for your sake, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us of those that we will be able to drink from the hawd of the Prophet on the day of judgment, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And make us of those who will be the neighbors of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Jannah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amin, amin. Wa qulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh. Say astaghfirullah, innahu huwa al-gafoor al-rahim.